Hey folks, JR. Back for another episode of Fallen Badge. This episode's gonna be the murder of Officer John Hammond. November 23, 1973, front of 1486 Chelsea. Now, 1486 Chelsea, that's the northwest corner of Chelsea and McNeil. A man was out in front of the store with a shotgun. Now, undoubtedly, he was a mental consumer. He was threatening people with the shotgun. Which sounds very familiar to the shooting just a few months earlier in South Memphis where the fellow was armed with a rifle. Now 1486 Chelsea that's the address of Tormina Brothers Incorporated. Now that's a grocery and market and they're kind of famous in Memphis for serving hot plate lunches. They've been around for a very long time. They're still in business, as far as I know, last time I checked. Now, the store is up in the Hyde Park area of Northeast Memphis. Now, I mentioned earlier, months earlier, in fact, roughly six months earlier, an event known as the Kansas Street Massacre had occurred. Now during that event, which we covered in a Fallen Badge episode, Officer David Clark and four citizens were shot and killed by a mental consumer armed with a rifle. And that was allegedly the event that began the creation of the TAC unit. Now, for some of you that watch the uh, Echoes of Shannon Street series, the Hyde Park's probably very familiar to you. It's a little over nine years after Officer Hammond was shot and killed. They had an even greater tragedy in the Hyde Park area, and that occurred at 2239 Shannon. And that's where Officer Bobby Hester and seven suspects would die during a 30-hour siege. Now, the Shannon Street address is probably not more than two or three minutes from Toramina Brothers Store. In fact, it's probably less than a quarter of a mile from where Bobby Hester and Ray Swill drank their last cup of coffee together before they went on that call. All right, so citizens call in about this fellow with the shotgun. Now, I don't know what kind of shotgun he was armed with, what kind of load he was carrying in it, but he hadn't shot anybody, but he's threatening people. So Officer Hammond and his partner, Billy Bandy, they're riding the North Precinct. Now, I don't know if they still had the same ward numbers or not, but if they did, that probably would be 128th ward. So anyways, they're dispatched to the armed party call to 1486 Chelsea. Now, according to some of the retired uh, MPD officers that I've communicated with about this shooting, At some point, the suspect moved to the rear of the store. Now, I don't know if he moved to the rear of the store prior to the arrival of the officers, or he did so after he saw the officers pull up on the scene. In fact, I'm not even for sure if the suspect was standing directly in front of the store when he was threatening passerbys. He could have been on that 
east parking lot. You can see from the pictures, there's a it's a fairly long north to south running parking lot on that east side by McNeil. And then of course we've got the, the long parking lot running north and south back on the west side, what I would call the rear of the store. Now there is that little area on the north side of the building. Got that small little alleyway. It's in between the store and the little white house. Now that could be the rear of the store and very well could have been the shooting location. I guess in terms of looking at this store, the true rear of the store would be this little alleyway here between the store and the little white house. So I'm not really sure where the suspect's at at the time, other than I do know allegedly the shooting did occur in the, in the back part, which would be the west side of the store. Now when Officer Hammond and Bandy arrived, I don't know which direction they came from. I'm not even sure where they parked. But at some point the officers confronted the suspect behind the store. Now the suspect fired at least one round from his shotgun and it struck Officer Hammond in the face. I don't know if he died on the scene or if he died at the hospital. Well, of course, with police officers and firemen generally, even if the officer is dead on the scene, they're still going to transport. They'll usually wait and declare him dead at the hospital. After Officer Hammond is shot in the face and goes down, his partner, Officer Bandy, he returns fire with his Model 10 Blue Steel 38 caliber revolver and kills the suspect. Now, at the time of his death, Officer Hammond was 27 years old. He was engaged to be married. Officer Edward John Hammond, Jr. End of watch, November 23, 1973.